Hi, I'm Stacey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Digilent Nexus A7 board. So this board was sent to me by Digilent for free to review in exchange for using it on this channel. And I thought that I would break up my review into three different categories. The first being the features of the board, the second being the support and documentation and tutorials available, and the third being the price. I'm reviewing this as a board for someone who's kind of in the beginner intermediate range. I'll start with the board features. So this board has an Artix 7 FPGA on it, and it comes in two variants. There's the 50 variant and the 100 variant, and the 100 variant has more space, more RAM and more logic, and an extra PLL. The one of the reasons why I like this board a lot is because of the number of peripherals. It's just got so much stuff on it. Especially for a beginner, you can flash a LED as your very first project, you can work with the Ethernet, you can do signal processing, you can do video processing, you can do really, really complex stuff on it. And so this board has quite a nice scope to grow into and i remember when i first bought my original digital board which was a uh, atlas i bought an atlas like 10 years ago and it had tons of peripherals and that for me was something that i looked at when i bought my first board because i wanted <laughs> to have space to do stuff and that was really nice to be able to do it with this the other thing is that it's got these pmod ports i think that's what they're called that's really nice for expansion. So you can buy uh, add-on modules like a little display or sensors if you want to sense something. So it's really nice to see what other little add-ons they have for this. So the second thing we'll talk about is some documentation and tutorials and stuff like that. So there is example code. It comes with pre-programmed flash ROM that contains a demo that makes the lights flash. The Digilent website also has a really nice tutorial of how to install the tools and the process to go through. I actually made a video where I follow their tutorial on how to do it if you want step by step. I was doing it in Linux, but Windows is simpler. You just skip a step in Windows, but otherwise it's very similar. And so they, they have really good tutorials on how to install the tools and how to run a, your first uh, little example project and how to download and use the demos. So there's quite a lot of resources available there to get the board running off the ground. But I think there is an assumption that you're going to be doing this in, it's upside down, in parallel with learning Verilog. If you're learning Verilog or you're learning VHDL, then it's kind of assumed that you're going to be learning that through a course or some other resource versus just through what they have to offer. They also have a GitHub account with lots of repositories that have lots of constraints and example code and stuff like that. For like an absolute, absolute beginner who doesn't know Verilog, it will be necessary for you to learn Verilog through some other means or VHDL. They don't have like extremely comprehensive like guides to Verilog available, but I don't think that's expected. There are some really nice resources for learning VHDL and Verilog if you want to do that. Um, and those will kind of help you with the hardware design and FPGA design portion of learning because there's kind of two parts to it. There's getting the board and the tools up and running, which is getting the hardware working and the tool chain and everything. And then there's learning the language and doing the actual FPGA design. And that is, it's two kind of separate skill sets. And that's one of the things that I think makes it difficult for beginners is that it's quite a steep learning curve. You've got all of these tools and you've got all the stuff that you have to install and work and drivers and, and you also have to learn the language. The documentation is good. There are links to the other devices on the board. So you can read the device documentation. There is the schematic, so you can reference the schematic. And the user guide or the documentation that's supplied with the board is not going to contain every single little tiny detail that you need. 
So if you want to know the pull-ups for the Ethernet, you're going to have to go to the Ethernet chip. If you want to know something about the interface with this other device, you're going to have to read about that other device's chip. On to the price. This is kind of in the middle of the road when it comes to FPGA devices. It's probably one of the more expensive beginner level devices. It's a board that's a really good board if you really know that FPGAs are what you, what you want to do. You've done a bit with FPGAs, maybe with someone else's board or some very long stuff online and you're like, yes, this is what I want to do, I am sure. You've done a few projects, this is for you. If you are on the fence about it, if you're not 100% sure that you're into FPGAs, if you, if you haven't done a project yet or you don't really know what they're about, then this is quite a bit of money to put up front for something that you don't know you'll like or want to try. If you know that this is where you want to go and you want to have a board that you can grow into and practice on and you've got all these great ideas of things you want to do, this is going to serve you well. I still have a Digilent Spartan 6 board from 10 years ago that works really well for me for my side projects and other things for like the majority of my projects obviously if they're hardware specific then not so much but for anything medium and small size this is great price wise they do have academic pricing if you're doing it through a university course or if you're a student and you're using it for academic purposes you can get academic pricing and that'll knock 70 dollars off the price it's a pretty good deal for what you get because of the peripherals and the chip. I really recommend this board. I've used Digilin for years. I've bought a Zebo and one of the Spartan 6 boards in the past and they've been really really good boards and I've always had a good experience with them and their support's been really good. So I uh, recommend them and that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I appreciate you and thank you for a thousand subscribers. I know we passed it a while back. I took a bit of a break over Christmas, but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again. Bye.